Play me that old soft shoe and nothing else will do. That's the dance my darling used to do. Yay! Hey guys, Ryan here, and Gaj is back. We saved him from hell. Thank God, dog. Exactly, and we're breaking down episode five of Preacher. It's called The Coffin. And if you read the comic books, then you know exactly where this is headed. Let's jump right into it. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe. We'll be breaking down every episode of Preacher this season. And guys, as usual, there are spoilers ahead, obviously. So go watch the episode and come right back. All right, let's talk about the big picture here. This was one of the most fun episodes of Preacher yet. Oh, by far. Like, it felt the most comic book episode of them all yet. Like, obviously the coffin. Yeah. Then we had the Allfather. And John Wayne, and even Grandma's appearance at one point. A lot of fun comic book references, and if you enjoyed the comics, you're sure to enjoy this episode. Oh, yes. So when we left off on episode four, Cassidy had just left Angelville. He escaped, thanks to the help of Tulip and Jesse. Um, and we knew there would be some repercussions for once Jody and TC found out, and they immediately do. Mm -hmm. And then an incredible fight sequence goes down between Jesse, Tulip, Jody, and TC. Oh, it was so good. Like just watching the dynamic, seeing how strong Jody was, yeah. but seeing what a badass Tulip was as she like outsmarted them and kind of got the upper hand on TC in that epic bathroom battle. Totally, that's a good point that Jody um, definitely dominates Jesse. Yeah. It's not a fair fight between those two. We've no. seen this numerous times throughout um, the show and in the comic books. Um, but Tulip held her own against TC. She did. Like, if it wasn't for the fact that Grandma had Jesse's like life in her hands, so to speak, yeah. she would have beaten them all. Totally. Like, she got her gun, she went out there, and if only she had shot TC first and then went out there, maybe it would have went a different way. A really fun sequence in the whole fight was the bathroom scene. Can we talk oh. about that for a second here? The found object bathroom weaponry. Hair remover. Found object bathroom weapon. the MacGyvering of these like creation of weapons. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And if you're listening closely, obviously that soundtrack is Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And that was actually inspired by a late night viewing of Werewolf of London, the movie, like from the 1930s. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I thought it was a fun little nod to put it into a TV show with, you know, vampires and voodoo and all that good stuff. And then we get to the moment where this episode gets its title, obviously the coffin. This is the punishment that Jesse has to endure from Jody, Grandma, and TC. Yeah, like we've seen the coffin in the comic books numerous times. Like Jesse's been tormented since childhood. Yeah. Like it's the thing that Grandma always uses to teach him a lesson whenever he used to cuss, whenever he was just a bad boy in her eyes. Yeah. She would use this to kind of shape him and try to mold him into who it was. But they kind of took a different way with the coffin this time. Yeah, I thought it was a little bit too easy to get out of. Um, obviously Jesse's older nowadays. Um, but it really wasn't believable on how he escaped, yeah. and, and, and obviously he should have been dead a, a long time before that. I mean, he was in that water for quite some time. Yeah. But, um, you know, it, it's, in the comic books, it's, it's not an easy escape for him at all. Yeah, it was almost near impossible. Like, yeah. And this one, it just seemed like he had an endless supply of cigarettes to just keep trying and trying until one just maybe works. But, I don't know, it just kind of felt like a cop-out to break out of the coffin that way. And if you look closely, Tulip's name is actually etched into the wood in the coffin, so we know that Jesse has spent some time previous years in the coffin as punishment. We saw the name Billy in there, yeah. which could refer to his childhood friend Billy Bob, which while we haven't seen the show yet, we do know the significance in the comics, and it would be a really cool little nod to the comic if that was true. Another incredible comic book reference during the sequence in the coffin is John Wayne. Um, and this happened a ton in the comic books. I didn't think we were ever gonna get John Wayne in the show. Like, he was the imaginary friend that was been there since the very beginning of the comic books. Like, he was there since childhood for Jesse. Yeah. And has constantly been a source of, like, reassurance and kind of, like, being there for him growing up. But it seemed like the show had abandoned that premise. Right. And it was just so cool to actually see their own take on it, where he goes into the own little fantasy world he's of, like, marshal. cowboys. Yeah, and he's a marshal he's, and he's shooting guys down. Yeah. Um, funny thing you say that, actually, uh, in San Diego Comic-Con at the panel, they were actually talking about uh, Seth Rogen and Sam Catlin 
that they almost didn't want to include John Wayne in the show at all at any point, which I was kind of surprised by. But they said that the show was just so ridiculous with all these things going on that an imaginary friend might not be necessary, but right. I'm ultimately glad that they ended up including him. I'm glad they did too. And it's not like your normal imaginary friend. It feels like it's only going to be used in dream sequences, right. as opposed to him walking alongside Jesse everywhere they go. Back in the coffin again, I see. Ain't seen you down here for some time. That's all right, son. Your old pal's gonna take over for you. Next up, it's time for the Messiah. And no, it's not Jesse Custer, as Hair Star wanted. It is Humperdew, and this is pure comedy. Oh, comedy gold. Like, it led to my most favorite scene in this entire episode, where Humperdew shows off his skills and the message that he will bring to the world and how he will save the world through dancing. A one, a two, a doodly doodly do. Play me that old soft shoe and nothing else will do. It was hysterical, and um, prior to that, we actually met a comic book big time comic book character, the Allfather. Yeah, the Allfather is so important in the comics and it was so cool to see him so accurately portrayed in the show. And he's a fan of Humperdue, so he's gonna be awesome. I, I, I found this so funny that he was actually on board with the Humperdue thing. Um, it was a lot of fun. Now remember guys, Hairstar is not the ultimate big bad of the grail, it is the Allfather. But I also noticed that Hairstar kind of fears the Allfather as well. Yeah, like he's planning a coup to like take over, which is why he wants Jesse. And just the fact that he has to go all in on Humperdue, who the Allfather's in on, but he wants no part of, you can see how uncomfortable he's around him. Right, and we tell we can find out later that he actually still wants Jesse Custer, obviously, because he wants to overthrow the Allfather and take full control of the Grail. Any other questions, Star? No, that uh, covers it on my end. Prepare the way for the Lord. Something tells me the second coming will be even better than the first. So the way that the Grail is going to get Jesse's attention is through Cassidy, who is now in New Orleans. Now Featherstone and company put a whole plot together in order to get Cassidy. What has Cassidy been doing in the meantime? He's been trying dating apps for vampires. With not much luck, unfortunately. No. Just when he finally thought he found someone that could help him ease the heartbreak of Tulip, he finds out that she's a poser. She's just a vampire fangirl. Now, the Grail's plan is interrupted by a kidnapping by Les Enfants du Song. I think I'm saying that correctly. It's the Children of Blood, and that's basically Icarus's crew. Yeah, straight out of the comics. Like, it's finally cool to actually see them enter the TV show world. Right, so uh, Cassidy's saved by them, and they're like worshiping vampires, obviously, in New Orleans. So he has kind of a new group of friends. Yeah, a new crew he can hang with, and who understand him in a level that no one else quite could. Now, back in Angelville, Grandma and TC are like role-playing, and it's extremely weird. It was so awkward and creepy. Like, it was this weird mother-son relationship thing that went to the next level, kind of like Lucille and Buster Blues from Arrested Development. It was kind of a <laughs> That is spot on. I did not think of that until right now. Um, and also, then we see Grandma get extremely pissed off and she takes her wig off and it looks extremely similar to what she looked like in the comic books. Like creepily so, like it was very spot on and actually it was very weird. Yeah, yeah, very weird. Um, and then we get the showdown between Grandma and Tulip. And I was actually kind of shocked that Grandma held her own yeah, for quite like, some time. Yeah, she seemed very agile and spry and actually was hanging in there with Tulip. Like, even with the knife, like she was getting the upper hand here and there and even got a little cut in. A lot of, uh, a huge contrast between what we saw we weeks past when grandma was weakened and literally in bed and couldn't move. Um, so now I guess she can fight. Uh, anyways, yeah. we find out that Tulip is connected to grandma when grandma brought her back from the dead. Yeah, through the fingernails. Right, so sh their lives are interconnected. So if grandma dies, Tulip dies. I did it, it's over. Yeah, I'm curious how she's going to get out of that predicament, because Madame Boyd definitely tricked her into this. And now the question is, can they kill Grandma? Is there a way around this? That's a really good point. Uh, basically, Tulip cannot trust Madame Boyd, we find out, um, and can't really trust anyone in, that, in Angelville as well, obviously. So uh, yeah, Jesse and company, they're in a bit of a predicament of how to get out of 
grandma's control. You know, he physically is under her control with the, with the blood pact, and now Tulip, we find out, is also under her control. Now, during this near-death experience for Tulip, we also have the return of God in his dog outfit, um, and he tells Tulip that she is failing that pass-fail test. Pass-fail, oh yeah. and you are failing. Yeah, it's kind of interesting, and I'm curious to see what exactly is the test that he has for Tulip. And I wonder if it's to see what her convictions are. Like, is she willing to kill Grandma knowing that it would mean her own death? Sacrifice herself, but in order mm -hmm. to kill the evil right. Grandma. So is that the pass fail test? Like, will he bring her back like he did in the comics if she's willing to go to that extreme? I'm not sure, because in the comics, the test was more really for Jesse or more to send a message to him. Right. But in the show, I think it's all about Tulip. And then Jesse, Jody, and TC are trying frantically to save Grandma's life so they can save also Tulip's life. And I love this moment because it was spot on Pulp Fiction. Oh yeah, they even made the reference to Uma Thurman. Like, she can't take it like Uma. <laughs> and by the end of the episode, we find out that Cassidy is hanging out with Acarius and the Children of Blood. We see that in the previews for next week. And also that Jesse's whole life got a bit more complicated with Grandma and Tulip's lives intertwined and obviously the blood pack that Grandma controls over him. Right. So there's no easy out right here. No, I feel like there's only like a couple options. Like either he gets the voice back and uses Genesis to get free mm -hmm. or they go for it and just try to kill her anyways, which would mean Tulip dying and hoping God revives her. Right. Or three, maybe the love potion comes back into play and they use that as a way out. That's a good point. I think Cassidy still has that love potion that he never used on Tulip. Hope maybe he can come back to Angelville and save them. Use some love, spray the love potion all over Jody, TC, and Grandma and make them love them again. I don't know. Um, but let us know what you guys think in the comments below. We'll be back again here next week for episode six. Now here's a sneak peek. Get her ready. Mm. Person ain't nothing without their soul.